I'll go ahead. I have a uh, one and a half cent comment here. Okay. Regarding Paul's recording and the Yoast, I could see it just fine. So I'm wondering if perhaps it isn't her monitor setting rather than Paul's setting. It could be, and that's why I said it just depends on um, what your pixel is set on your monitors. Um, you can actually have it set to record or show whatever it is that comes up on your um, computer really large or really small. So, um, you can go into your actual computer settings and go to your monitor and go to your pixel images and change it. Um, I'm for, I think most computers are set to, um, what is it, 1040 or something? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, just go into your monitor um, or go to your um, settings for your computer go in, or your control panel, go into your monitor and then go into your pixel size. Um, that should change, help with your images that shows up on your computer or any kind of information that comes across your computer. It'll show bigger. I didn't think about that. Yeah, I'll give it a shot or call Apple. Yep, there you go. <laughs> All right, next you know, question. Yes. I have, I have two questions. Okay. Um, my first one is technical. Um, on my computer um, page, I'm trying to go in and I'm going to make it my own words. In fact, when I was check, changing my links, making sure they were changed, I double checked them. I noticed. Uh, the video, the third video under button number three under Smart Miner, using Rory's words before I changed to my words for the computer. Yeah, the video is gone. Yeah, okay, because the video, act, okay, so should I remove it? Because the yes. reason I should remove it. Yeah, yeah. that it's video is no longer valid. And whenever, and because it's linked with um, YouTube, uh, once they take a video down, wherever it appears with that link will also go down. So you can do one of two things. You can find another um, Bitminer or Bitcoin um, video and put it there from YouTube, or you can just remove it altogether. Um, okay. And content. That's totally up to you. But yeah, um, and it's not just there. Wherever your computer page shows, there's um, he actually has it in three sections. Um, yeah. Everywhere that it shows, it's going to be that way. Okay. Um, so uh, you want to just double check it. But usually once you change one page, they should all change, but not necessarily. So you want to check in all three places where your smart minor page shows and make sure that that get rid of that video link. Okay. Thank you. Because it was okay. also overlapping some of my text and I thought, oh no, yeah. what a mess, you know, so, okay. Yeah. If, your video, if your video is overriding um, a text, me your messaging, it's because it has that, um, that, uh, technical glitch of the percent sign and your actual coding and your HTML coding for your videos. Um, so you would actually have to pull up the HTML coding, find that link where it has all those, um, uh, that long character. Yes. And get rid of it. Um, actually change okay. it 4%. Um, but other than that, hold on a minute, let me get rid of these pop-ups real quick on my, so they don't show up on my recording. Hold on. Um, but yeah, that's what that is. But if you're getting rid of the video, um, then you won't need to worry about that. Just remove that block. But otherwise, you will need to go into the HTML and wherever that percent sign shows. And it's usually the same. It looks like the same string of characters. You just want to stay within your, um, your quotes so that you don't mess up anything. Okay, great. Thank you. And my second, my second question is a total different topic. It's okay. when, we're post, when we're posting our advertisements, for instance, I'm using Ablewise as an example. Okay. I'm monitoring the success, you know, the statistics on as far as uh, the, how many times people have read um, the different parts like my ad copy versus going and actually clicking over to my website, uh -huh. my PBS. And is there a certain, like, percentage that is considered good or or maybe not as well I need to go improve you know my, my either my headline or my ad copy you know as, after I watch it for a week or two the different ads that are posted I just didn't know if there was a rule of thumb no what I normally do is if I don't get in double digits within the first two weeks I always give it at least a week to run it just okay. get it out there the second week um, I let it run again if the numbers do not change then I the first thing I do is go in and usually change my headline um, okay. And then because it means, you know, if you're getting some traffic, that means there is some interest there. Uh -huh. but there's not enough attractiveness. So you need to change your top, your headline to get more people in. That means, you know, however you need to reword it, then I usually let it run for another couple of weeks. If I still see that the numbers do not increase, then it could be your location. So then change your location. 
um, where you're posting it at because um, demographics could be different in different areas. Um, and then I usually let it run another week or two. If it still doesn't change, then I take it completely out and put something new in there, especially if you have the free ones because you only get 10 free. Um, if okay. My rule of thumb. Now, I check my, you know, because Ablewise does send you a weekly update on how many times your link has been seen or your ads have been seen. Um, right. With the paid ones, um, I do have the paid one, um, and they send me a list every week. Um, at the end of the week on Friday, I get a list um, of how many times my ad was seen, and if it keeps running, you know, below double digits, then within um, about six weeks, I will remove that link. I will remove that ad. Um, especially if I've changed it and done everything I can to it. That doesn't mean I won't come back and rerun it because it depends on also the time of year. You could be running the ad at the wrong time of the year. That that's not what some people are looking for because um, now it's summertime. Okay. People are looking for things that's outside, you know, having fun, adventure, outdoors. Um, you don't want to be mm -hmm. advertising winter retreats and, <laughs> you know, coats and glasses, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or back to school stuff. They just got out of school. So, um, so it could just be the time of year. That doesn't mean you can't advertise. You want to go to your other free sites where you have access to more um, ads that you can put out and run it. Any, any okay. type of traffic to your website site is great um if you if you know that your ad is good it like i said it just could be the time of year the demographic area that you're promoting it in um or just there's just not much interest in it at this point in time but run it on the other free ads where you have access to post as many times as you want um, but when you have okay. an ad site that has limited ability you want to make sure that you have your good ads there that are getting the traffic to your system great okay thank you sure you're very welcome who's next Okay, um, I sent you a, a Skype about Snippet, and you, and you sent me something cryptic back, and I didn't understand. Uh. <laughs> yeah, okay. all right, so Snippet is a wonderful tool, um, and if you have Windows, you have this lovely Corona right here. It's this little circle, and you just click on that, and you can ask her anything. She is a she. If you put voice to it, it's usually a she, and you just type in Snippet tool. And if it's in your programming, it will pull it up where it's at. And see here, snip well, and I had, I had and something called snip and copy, snip and paste. Is that the same thing? Are you on a Mac? Uh, you would Packer. You'll, yeah, it should be the same thing. Yep. And what that does is um, I use it all the time. Um, I actually have it pinned to my, um, my board right here. So what you could do is say um, with your snippet, let's go... Um, I'm going to come here and and say you are, where do I want to go? When you get that phone, you're going to. So let's go to, um, All right, let's do this. It's taking too long. So let's go to Facebook because I get a lot of cute things from my Facebook. And so we're going to log into Facebook and say that I see something there that I like, um, that I want to use, that someone has sent me. Usually, you know, really cool post or um, a meme or something that I want to use. There's actually a couple of good ones in there. Um, and because I am using a satellite link, or uplink it's taking a little to load. This is I see the symbol, but I guess that's not okay for Max, is it? No, Max, I think it's still the same. So if you go into your um your search bar and type yeah. in snipping tool or snipping error and it's in your system, it will pull it up. <coughs> All right. So let's see um what I can find. I'll show you how to use this the snippet. It's really cool. Um I'll get to my time. Isn't that part of the notes thing also? Not with snippet, that's that's the editor for your notifications. So it's only for program. But meta description is part of the Yoast thing. Yes, yes. And you get to your meta description through your snippet. So once this comes up, I was at the uh, lady, <coughs> Vanessa in DC, and she had like 3,000. I was like, 2,000 All right, so. Come in it. Now what you have to do yet? Okay. Oh, my grandson became second. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. 
That's nice. Congratulations. Thank you. He was so excited. <laughs> All right, come on. Because um, they don't want to load with this satellite link. I had to ask a hard question. Right? Oh, it's not. It's just one. I want to make sure I get something good that I really want to use. <laughs> and I know there's one on here, a meme um, that my cousin sent me. Um, that's really cute. Um, it's just taking forever. Yeah, we'll wait. All right. So we're going to do this. Right, say I want to use this picture right here. So I get my snippet tool, and it will it has its own little um, box up here. So then you want to click on new, okay? And you see it highlights. Now you have to check here on your modes. Um, you have your free form, which means that you can draw however your mouse moves. That's where your line will move to. Then you have your rectangle snippet, which means that you basically set the size and dimensions of it. Then you have your window snippet, which will do a particular window that you're on. Or you have a full screen snippet, which means it will snip the whole screen that you are viewing. I always do the rectangle because then that way I can choose what I want to do. And then as I'm moving it, you see it has the crosshairs and I just move it over. And oh, I bring it, bring I it, <laughs> yep, I bring it down. And wherever I stop it, that's what it highlights. All right. So there's my picture. Then I just save it. I save it as. And then it's going to pull up my last place that I saved pictures in or the last place that I was working in. Um, so this one was actually, um, so I was in my advertising pics. I don't want to do advertising, so I'm going to go back to my blogging pictures. And I have a folder um, that I want to put it in. And where is it? It is my family folder. My family. So you see where it automatically says capture because you capture the picture. I always rename it Eli at bat. And it always saves as a PNG, which is usually the uh, most standard form that uh, most uh, pictures will uh, save in because it has a better quality. You could save it to a JPEG file if you wanted to, but I would suggest you leave it as a PNG. It just has a better quality once it saves. And you can click save and your picture is saved. And then if I wanted to double check it, I would just pull up my document page I will pull up my blogging pictures and then I will go to my family page and then I will look for the picture with my name on it. And I named it Eli at bat. Okay, it's updating. I'm still adding pictures to it. I'm still making sure everything is using the picture not there yet. Okay, so I'm just updating the picture. It should. Where'd you go? I understand now why you only need four hours of sleep a night to get the rest <laughs> of it sitting waiting for your computer. It is. I, well, normally it wouldn't. It's just I'm using this satellite link because we're having a storm and it's been knocking out my, my internet all day. So let's see if we can pull this again. It could just be that it's really slow. I know Mike Green told me you got a bad one there yesterday. Yes, we did. Um, I think we're getting the backlash from New Orleans because New Orleans is supposed to be getting about seven in the Ooh. next couple of days. Um, they already got severe flooding um, already. The levees are just about full. Say 75 inches? I mean 25. <laughs> It's something that I'm hearing from friends down there. A lot of people in our industry, our business that are down there. And um, I'm just hoping that they're okay. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. You know, they're on a boat. 
there's I um, have one of my friends and it will show up there and then you can use it um and you can do it from anywhere um you can do it Google because you can just say it straight from google but like my um, canada page um i got you if you're in dc you're a seller they send you emails all the time with all kind of fun stuff in it um so they sent the um the brochure for okay come on for the new canada pr uh, processing that they're doing you know every um couple of or every day it's going to go up a dollar until the end of the month um so if they get in for their pre-enrollment pretty early then they can save money instead of paying the full twenty-five dollars. Well, I like that chart instead of going every day updating my Canada page um, and saying, "Hey, now it's twelve dollars. Now it's ten dollars. You know, now it's eighteen dollars." I just came in, went to my um, uh, email account, pulled up that that email that they sent me, and I sent that chart. In. I sent also, this chart, see what, and then I use my lovely Canva to go in and put my own words in there so it's not a complete copy um but here, right here if you are in dc or direct sellers um this came in your email when canada was launched and as you can see it has all this lovely information so instead of me like i said changing my website every day or trying to explain how it only goes up a dollar a day until the 25th i just printed it out so they can look and see what day they're on and see how much it's going to cost them to get in um, and then the same thing I did was I went to direct sellers. I pulled up that I was in Canada and pulled up the Can Canadian page and got my pricing. So this is a snippet and I do have it to where it outlines in red. You can change your outline color or have it not outlined. I like to outline it so then it, it stands out. Um, and I just copied exactly this, saved it. And when I did my page, I just pulled it up and put it in my media file, um, my media library. So there's so many different things that you can do with your snippet. Um, and you know just add it to your pictures um, and, or your folder and then just use you know just keep continue to use it as you normally would it will help um, make your pages a little bit more unique each computer system has a different tool so you just have to look at your system type in the word snippet and see what pulls up um, everything's labeled a little bit different but if you do have a windows program then it is called snipping tool so hope that helps that's explain it a little bit better Okay, thank you. I'll have to fool around with that, though. Yeah, yeah. If you have, and you should have Corona. If not, just pull up your Windows and um, your Windows icon here, and your Corona should be right here, um, or in your drop-down list of programs that you have, um, and it's right here. Uh, and just click on it, and then you can pin it to your menu um, and save it. And then that where that's where you can go and search anything in your system to see if you have it. If it's not in your system, then it will give you a listing of where you can download it from the internet. Um, so, but for the most part, if you have Windows, you should have a snippet editing tool or snipping tool. Okay. All right. What's next? Is can there I, any, anything what? anybody wants me to go over or show you how to do? Well, can I just a quick question on Skype? Is there a way to cut out, you know, delete part of, like, I have things from you that I really want to keep and remember, but, and I only want to cut out some of the conversation, or do I have to copy it and then post it onto a page? So yes, you have, because it only will stay in there for uh, videos and anything like that that record, because you can record your um, Skype sessions with your instructor. Um, so if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one Skype session or even with the student, um, as far as instructing, you can record it. Whoever do, initiates the call can record it and save it. Um, it saves for 30 days. Your um, uh, string of information that you have here, it saves indefinitely until you go in and actually delete it. But if there's anything in here that you want to save, then you see your three dots over here. You just click on that and it will give you some options and you can actually copy you can copy a specific link or you can highlight exactly what you want to save and then copy it manually and then transfer it to a document. That's the only way you can save it. So like if there's a conversation I've had and it's like maybe four or five of those little orange things, I can just, actually what I should do is I just screen share and then paste it onto pages. I guess that's what I should do. Yeah, you should. Yeah, it won't, the, since they, uh, when, when we had the old Skype version, you could copy a whole page. Now you can only copy each individual block. You can't go down and say, okay, I want to copy all of this. It will only let you copy each individual conversation. Oh, you're kidding. Uh-uh. Oh, 
only, only one orange block at a time. At a time. So unless you go in and do, like you said, just do a control V, hopefully I don't know if that'll let you do it and copy yeah. everything and transfer it over. But um, before you could do that, or you can, I think it's um, log into Skype itself and see your conversations, but it's been right. so long since I've done that. I can't remember how to go in and do that. Um, but I do know there's a way that you can go into um, official Skype and find your conversations and download them from there. Oh. Yeah. I just, can, can you show me how... Can, go ahead. Can you show me how you added uh, Canada to the wine offering on your uh, blog? Sure. Whenever you go um, create a page, um, it automatically is saved in your system, you know, uh, when you save it. So when you go to your menus... you go to your menus, it will show you um, all the pages that you have recently done. So you have right here, this is your menus page. If you don't know, go through it here. You can actually go through appearances, go to your menus, and it pulls up your menu page. And this is where you can work from. And then you see where it says add menu items. Um, you have the options to where you can see your most recent pages that you've wrote. Uh, wrote. Um, and they're all right here. Or you can view all, or you can search for a page. If you knew what your title was, you can search for a specific title. Um, so what I've done is these are the ones that I've recently made. And I just click on the one that I want. And since I was doing Canada, I click on Canada. Then you click add to menu. And you can pick multiple ones. It doesn't have to be one at a time. And you hit add to menu and it automatically puts it at the bottom of your menu tab, menu structure. So then you come all the way to the bottom and you see that it indents it as a new menu item. Well, you don't want it to be a new menu item. You want it to be a sub item of a column that you already have. So then what you have to do, there's no way that you can go in and physically, you know, say, hey, I want it here. Um, you, you have to drop and drag. Um, you can tell it to move up one, you know, I'm going to play with this some because I, I got a feeling if I go in here and tell it a command where I want it to go, I can get it to go there. But if I put it the wrong way, it won't. So once I figure that out, I'll let everybody know. I'll tell Rory I figured it out and give it to everybody. But I know there's a way you can do it by that. Um, and then what you want to do is just drag it to where you want it to go. And I'm not going to drag it because I already have one there. And um, once you get it there, then you want to move it exactly where you want it to move to, and then make sure you hit Save Menu. There's one at the top and one at the bottom of this page. If you do not hit Save Menu, it will disappear. It's like you never did it. And then you just click your Save Menu, and once your cursor quits spinning, um, and it tells you your menu has been updated, then you can go back to your visit site. Yes, I don't want to save it. And your menu will, structure will be complete. It automatically updates once you hit that Save Menu. And that's for any page. But you want to make sure that um, you don't add every page you create to your menu structure. It will get too cluttered. What you can do is when you create a page, like I have a couple that I've done that's not in my menu structure, and I've got them notated. So what I'm going to eventually come back to do and go to my category menu. And like I'm, I'm in the process of doing one for clothing. I don't want to put it on my menu structure. Um, so what I'm going to do is come here to my clothing category page and instead of putting it on my menu structure I'm just going to come here and click on my edit and I'm going to put just a little blog right here basically a little advertisement um, and say like like they have here beauty and online savings um, except mine's going to be um, fashionable and trendy um, um, uh, not cheap I don't want to use cheap but it's going to be like fashionable and trendy um, price something, you know, clothing. And then I'll put a little blurb about, you know, how you can get uh, name brand fashions at, you know, bargain bracing pricing and then put the information there and then put my link to my page here instead of making it a part of my menu structure. And then that way they can come here and read and see what I, you know, wrote and go there, click on the link and go to my page. Just like with here, you know, they can click on the link and go to that page that I'm advertising um, and not necessarily a direct link. So that's one way to So when you did, go ahead. I'm sorry. So when you um, when you go into menus and you go down to where you have it put in there already for Canada, what did you do in the email that was sent to you by DC? Did you cut and paste that and put it in there? Cut and paste. No, I created my own page. I okay. wrote my own page. 
Yeah. Now, some of the pictures I did use the snippet tool to get some of those pictures in there. Um, but I created my own page and I went to D.C. and read about the camp, read about Canada. I used some of the information off the D.C. Um, email to write my page. Um, but yeah, that's my page. I wrote it from scratch. OK, but yeah, Roy does have one. If you do not have a Canada page yet, go to 1f16.com forward slash Canada. Roy has created one uh, for the pre-launch. Um, and you can do, go there and copy his. Just make sure that you change the title a little bit and then go in and modify it like you would any other page. Um, but this yeah, is the page. Phyllis sent me one, and I guess it's probably the same one with Rory, but, and she said that we could cut and paste that. Yeah, yeah, you and can. Then, go and ahead modify. And then modify, exactly, yeah. But it's like I tell my students, whenever you cut and paste something, you still want to tweak your title. You don't want right. it to be exactly the same. You still want to tweak everything, but that is your starting point. Um, the other so thing, you kind of that, where do you put, like, how do you move that into where that menu selection was? Um, that's what, yes, okay, so let me go through this. Uh, so once you create your page and you're done with it, um, you're going to go to your dashboard and you're going to go to your appearance, okay? And once you get your appearance drop down, you're going to go to your menus, Okay, and then when your menus show up, I don't know why it keeps coming here. You go to your menus, and then your menu structure shows up. Okay, so here is your menu structure. See, it says menu structure, and then you have your section over here that says add menu items. So once you created a page, it shows up here under your most recent pages, or you can view all your pages. Since it's a page you just created, you always want to make sure you're viewing your most recent. Okay, so then here that is, here's your most recent ones, and so you want to click on the one that you just did, which will be your Canada page, and once you check it, you're going to click add to your menu, okay? So how did you get, how did you get that Canadian Wine Club business opportunity there where it says most recent? Because that's the page I wrote. As soon as you write a page and publish it, it will show up here. You don't have to put it here. This just shows me all the pages that I've written. That I, I guess I don't to. understand how to, how to publish it then. Okay, once, okay, I see what you're saying. So here's your page. Yes, we're going to leave. Okay, so we're going to go to my all pages. Okay, and say we have just created a new page. Let's go here, um, and we, we created a new page. I'm going to go here and I want to create a page, not a post. Post goes on your front page or your home page. Pages are indexable. So, no, we don't want to do a page. Post, we want to do a page. So, it click page, post. I don't want to do that. So, I want to come here, let this come back up, and I want to click new and I want to go to page. And so, we're going to act like we're creating a brand new page. Let's see how fast I can type today. And we can create a new Canada page. And since I am going to be creating a page, like I said, I always have two of my tabs open because I will use some from other pages that I have in there. All right. Let's get rid of Facebook. I'm not going to use Facebook right now. So here's my new blank page. It's totally blank, so it's going to add, say, add a title. And since I know some good keywords um, to use, I already said Canadian. So I'm going to say Canada. Canada's own fine wine club. Okay, so there's that. And so I'm going to start my first paragraph. I like writing in classic, so I'm going to come here. I'm going to click classic. And you always want to use your title in your first paragraph, at least within the first sentence. 
So I'm going to say, just start off with what my title is. Sheila, I'd like to step in here with a quick little side question. Mm -hmm. um, you've got that title in your first sentence. Yep. I, I wrote one, just finished it a couple of days ago, and my title, the complete title, was in the first sentence, but it was... Uh, not the very first part of the sentence, but rather the secondary part. And Yost kept yeah, telling me that my key phrase was not in the first sentence. Yep. Go back and look and make sure that you have it exactly like it appears at, in your key phrase. If you have a word capitalized in your key phrase and it is not capitalized in your sentence, it will think it's different. Been there, done that. Yep. So then it's just a, a matter of the wording. I wouldn't worry about it if you got green and green. I don't. That's why I was trying to fix it. Is that the I only thing orange. that's green? Yeah. Try the other ones first and, and try to get your green and green. Um, if you have to, rearrange your sentence so that your title appears first. But if, if you don't have um, a green and green and you have more than two reds, fix the other ones first. Gee, I right. lucked out on the great training. Huh? All right, so then I'm going to come here to my show you. And I'm going to do a heading, too. All right, can you please, please mute you. yourself? I hear somebody talking yeah. and having a conversation outside. Yeah. Mars. So. Oh. All right, let me mute everybody. If you need to talk, just unmute yourself. All right. So then I'm going to start, um, and I want this one in color. So I'm going to come here to my color palette. I want it in burgundy. I'm going to ask a stupid short question. How did you get the um, type larger? I don't know why I couldn't figure out how to make the wording letters um bigger i i can't canada's wines is all i could get the um why can't i find the right words to use? oh because when you want to make sure this is a header so when you come here to header it always makes it bigger and it shows you how big it's going to be i didn't paragraph, put it in the small graph i guess yeah paragraph is always going to be the same text size okay sorry. but if you want to highlight or create a header you have to indicate that you want it to be a header That's um so stupid i remember that yeah you know. you're fine Left the brain last night. <laughs> but now, if you want to make the sentences bigger, they can't be the size of the header. I, I got that, but they can be a little bit bigger than what's printed it'll out. It'll be a right? header, so it'll look like your whole paragraph's a header. Okay, no, but isn't there a size underneath the header size? Mm -mm, not for a paragraph. All, oh. all sizes oh. are headers. So if you see here, if yeah. it says heading, it, yeah. will be, it will be classified as a oh. header, not a paragraph. Oh, boy. Yeah. So I, I see. Number six doesn't count as um, just a paragraph. I no, okay. it's a, it still says, as long as it says heading, it will classify it as a heading, not a paragraph. Thank you. Why are the little things I always forget? <laughs> Can I plead that I'm old? <laughs> no. And you always want to make sure that you have at least 300 words. Um, and so let's see. I want to add a new paragraph, a uh, new block. Where did it put my block? And so here I want to do... Um, an image, and then I'm going to go to 
my media library because I already have this image in here. And I did a vegan page the other day too, so that's why you see all this food and makeup and stuff. So I'm gonna pull this image right here. And I'm gonna select. And there's my image. Um, I actually wanna put a caption under here and say, what day are you joining okay and since this is an example I'll come back and redo it um, I'm not going to be like Paul and spend the day uh, writing the whole thing because that will take up too much of our time and we have other questions um, and y'all can see his video today it was amazing on how to write a page in 45 minutes. Um, we're not going to do that today because <laughs> I'm starting from scratch. <laughs> he was modifying a page. <laughs> so um, now if, you go, if you click outside your classic clock, just go over to the margin right there on the right. Okay, click there. And see, it goes to documents. Does that mean yeah. anything? Yeah, that just means that you're in your document. You're not creating a block. If I come down here and want to create a block, then it will actually go back to block or I can click it and go back to block and then it okay. goes yeah whenever okay. you click yeah whenever you click away from your page it just goes to document letting you know that you're in your document that's all it's saying it yeah. mean that, okay because no. I can when I go outside I go why is it gone back it no that's just mean you've clicked off the block you were in you're no longer in a block okay. um, so then we're going to go back to classic and I'm going to create another header and this one I want it to be purple. This is why I love classic because you can individualize your your page. How many headings should we have again? I forget. It just depends like, on the size. You want to have a heading um, for every 150 to 250 words. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So then I got starting your wine club. Sheila, mm -hmm. will we get a copy of this uh, training session? Yes, I will have it on my Facebook page. Uh, not my Facebook, on my YouTube channel. I'll post that before we leave if you don't have it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. I was confused about something Roy said the other day. Are we in Germany or are we not in Germany? We are in pre-launch. They had to stop marketing or working with Germany because they ran into some roadblocks and they really wanted to get Canada up and going. Um, I think they're going to do Mexico next, trying to get Mexico and Germany together. They are going back to um, the people that they need to talk with in Germany, but we are still pre-launch for Germany. It's kind of on hold, but you can still pre-launch, market pre-launch in Germany. Um, hopefully they're trying to, they don't have an estimated date of when that's going to be open, but I do know that, um, Kevin and DC are working on getting back in touch with the people to see if they can get rid of the roadblock that they ran into. But they were in there and now they're not in there. No, they Is were not. They were still trying to do pre-launch like they were do like they're doing with Canada now and they ran into some roadblocks. Well, I don't think my Germany page was ever saying, they ever said pre-launch on it. It should have. Double check. Because oh, it, yeah. yeah, it, it should say pre-launch because we were never open in Germany. Sheila, is there any talk or plans of going to Switzerland or Austria next? They're working on the pack rim. 
Um, but once they get that done, there should be um, uh, the ability to open up into more countries. They're, they're eventually wanting to be able to market worldwide. Right now, they just have to make sure they get through all the red tape. So I, they're doing sections I asked around. because I think Austria and Switzerland are, are as wine-friendly as Germany is. Yep. And I think it's just wherever they have the ability to market. Let's see, a couple. Now, all of this wine, you have to pay the money to become it, like you did in Valentis. Yes. There, there's a couple of, um, well, there's two options, three options, actually. Um, one, they don't market too heavily. Um, um, for this, you have the two ninety nine or the two forty nine. This is for the United States, um, which is your brand partner, your first brand partner. Uh, well, you can come in as a customer at forty nine ninety five, uh, seventy nine ninety five, or ninety nine ninety five. That's two bottles, four bottles, or six bottles. Um, then you can come in as a brand partner, um, and then you have the option of two forty nine, where you get four bottles of wine every month. Um, and you, 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 depending on the tax in your state, it runs from anywhere from one hundred one dollars to one hundred fifteen for your monthly order. Um, and then you have um, the Elite Pack, the Elite brand partner, which is $4.99. And then your first order, you get um, a case of wine. Um, and you get a whole bunch of little odds and ends stuff there. Um, and then every month, you get your four bottles. Now, once you become, you get your three customers, and they, you know, are in. Your three customers have to be in for three months, I mean, for two months consecutively. Then you get your wine for free. When you start getting your wine for free, you can upgrade to the six bottles with no cost. All you have to do is pay your tax. Um, so I always tell people, wait until you get the six pack. I mean, it is more economical to get six bottles. But once you become, you get your wine for free, upgrade then, then you don't have to pay anything but your extra shipping. So, um, and it's really good. Um, you know, I, I don't drink. So those of you that don't drink, that's not a big issue. I give my wine away for every wedding I go to, bridal showers. I take the mom or the husband, whatever, a bottle of wine, a couple of bottles of wine. Every barbecue I go to that I know there's going to be serving alcohol, um, I take a couple of bottles of wine, and they always have a tag with my um, information, my business card attached to it. And so now whenever I go somewhere, that's the first thing people ask me, are you bringing any wine? So um, you can get really good customers having your own social um, you know, either at your house or at a potential customer's house and just take your wine and give it away as a door prize. Um, you know, so like I said, I don't drink wine. Um, I do cook with wine. So um, it, it's, I guess you can say I drink it that way. <laughs> um, don't think of it as more of a business instead of as, you know, something you have to do. Um, but they do have an option for those that just, cannot handle it. I have a couple of students that are recovering uh, um, substance issues, uh, but they see the business side of it. And so they do the, what they call the non-product brand partner, um, where you can come in and it's like a $70 fee. Um, you still get your link, but you get no wine um, that comes to you. Um, and then as you, I have a couple that got in that way and just upgraded once they got their business rolling um, and get your link, at least you have a link that you can uh, promote. Um, but it's not something that we promote because then people get in, they get complacent and they don't want to upgrade. Um, and then they get upset when their compensation is not matched because you do not get the same compensation at that level. You do get some compensation, but not as if you were actually receiving the wine. Um, so you want to be very aware of that. Uh, but there are options. And the $70 option is you have to call in um, to DC to actually get that. It's not something that's offered on the site. So... Um, but it is the thing if you, I mean, I don't go socially really anywhere. I, I told you I'm getting you out of that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that we ain't going to discuss that. We've already discussed that menu, Ms. Constant. We, we, we've been there. I done told you, you got too many connections. We're going to re revisit them. So, <laughs> so <In a> while. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, that my, miracle arrives. my husband comes to Virginia at least twice a year. We might, might make it a third time this year oh. so I can just go up there to find you. Oh, <laughs> oh, I told you I would come, but, but you know, I just, I keep rolling it over in my mind money wise and that I yeah. don't drink. And I understand. You know, the next door.com thing, I go on that a bit and I just don't know legally. 
I don't know if I can say, you know, I belong to this wonderful thing. Hey, I've got a sample. If you'd like, I'm not sure I can do that. You can't ship out your wines. That's the one thing. You can't ship them out. But I can give it, like, if somebody, next door is, like, in your area. It's like, you know. Yeah, if you can meet them somewhere and hand it to them, but you cannot mail it. Okay, so if I, I could say, hey, let's have a cup of coffee. Exactly. And, exactly. You know. Exactly. You can give it away all day. You just cannot mail it to anybody to give it away. You have to physically hand it to them. Okay. How long have you been with the um, group? Um, a year and a half. And how long did it take you to get into your rhythm like what you are now? Um, I'm kind of a cheater because I did this as a business um, or as a job for 15 years in the, in the corporate world. Um, I had to write papers all day. I had to write up agendas and, and work on the Internet. So I came in already knowing this. I had to do social media stuff all the time. So I kind of had a leg up on it. Um, so, uh, but just depending um, on, on how comfortable you are on writing stuff, um, it, you could take off. I always tell all of my students and some of them are here. I tell them all the time, don't write around a product. You will get brain drop. I promise you, you'll be thinking, God, what can I say about this? Especially if it's something you're, you're not comfortable with. Like with me, I don't know nothing about wine. I, I don't know what it goes with. I don't know what it tastes like. Um, I can tell you how it's made, how it's processed. I can tell you any technical thing you want to know about wine, except how it tastes. Um, so I write on technical parts of it, or I write about like this, you know, pricing, indexing, um, things like that. I can write about that. I write about what I know. Um, and then once That's I get my device. page, yeah. And then once I get my page done, I go in and I put my pictures in that I like that goes along with what I've said. Then I find a link. I don't do linking until after I have everything out of my head that I want to write up talk about. Um, I don't ever pull a link and say, okay, what can I write about it? Cause I will be here for days and days and days and then get frustrated and not write anything. So that's never, good advice. Yeah. And never, how long did it take for you to start earning a good income? Um, pr well, once I got into DC, I became a master seller within four months. So I've been there ever since. Um, then I got into Valentis and started with the marketing. So I do this from home all day. This is what I do from that. So, so. And so when did you start uh, earning a good income or revenue from the business? Um, probably when I could get, I would say about Christmas, six months, maybe. Yeah, about six months where I didn't have to dip into my savings. So, yeah. And then... Um, but now I do this every day. That's why I and see some people don't have that option. See, the, the other thing is I have a wonderful husband who makes a really good income. So income was never an issue with me. Um, it is with some people. So I wouldn't suggest, you know, this is what I tell people, your income, when you start making money, before you decide that you're ready to leave your job, make sure that you've got enough revenue coming in on a steady basis that it will not falter you from you know maybe yeah. losing your house or you know anything's going to fall right. by the wayside um but you want to make sure that you have that income steady that means you have to work your business every day 200 ads is not going to be enough for you to get your business out there um it takes a good three to four months before your page gets indexed really good on google um unless you have a really good keyword and you're advertising every day you should be writing in your website every day you should be advertising your website every day um it mm -hmm. should you shouldn't be going a day and saying, okay, I'll catch up tomorrow because tomorrow never comes. It, it's yeah. Day. Um, so always, always, you should be doing something every day. You should be advertising. If you don't do anything, you should be advertising. I do at least 100, 200 ads a day minimum on mine. And do um, you do that like between classified and social media and different avenues? Yep. Yeah. I have so many different ones. Um, hold on. Let me finish this so I can show you what we're doing. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I heard Paul has over 200,000 ads now. Yeah. That's great. All right, so now we're going to go here. And since this is an ad, basically an ad, I'm not going to really worry about my Yoast, but I can come down here and look at it and say, okay, let me see what it looks like. Um, if it's going to show up for me. All right, so let me save my draft. 
All right, so once I save my draft, I already know that my Yoast is going to not be good because, number one, I haven't assigned it a keyword. My readability is great. See, so my readability is already green. That will change as soon as I put my focus keyword in. So what do I want my focus keyword to be? And I want it to be Canada's. And I always put my focus keyword in lowercase. Hmm. Why? Because when you have it in uppercase, your lowercase will always rule. If you have it in uppercase, then that will always be your um, go-to. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so, and I still got a sad face, and I can tell you it's because I don't have any of that in a heading. Watch and see. Okay, I only have 136 words, which is bad, which is fine. I can try that again. Um, I don't have a meta description, internal links, outbound links, so, um, and I don't have it in a subheading, so. Um, but you have a lot to work on. Yeah, but I'm going to go ahead and publish it. Yeah. Just so I can show you, I can always come back and put it in draft. But I didn't think I could publish it like that. Why am I forgetting what you told me? Oh. Yeah, you're not. You can publish a page at any time and always work on your Yoast. Just make sure you have a link. I have no links in this, but this is just for an example. But so Google won't see me. It won't, I won't show up on Google. Yeah, no. This will show up on Google, but not right now because I haven't, I haven't advertised it. It's on Google, but because I haven't advertised it, nobody's going to be looking for it yet. Uh -huh. um, and you see right here where it says switch to draft? I can always come back and switch it back to draft. Just a click of a button. Okay. Good. But now I'm going to come back here to where it says my parents and menus. And I'm going to click on my menus. And it's going to show recent. So I'm going to come over here, recent, and there's my page I just created. Okay. So then I'm going to click on this page. And I'm going to add it to my menu. Now it doesn't take it off my recent. It just tells me these are the pages that you've made within the last few weeks or so. They always stay there. And so now it's added to my menu. It always puts it at the bottom of your menu structure. You can have it to where you put it at the top. It really doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to, here's my page right here. Let's move this back down. I don't know why it's supposed to go away when I'm not using it. So now there's my page I just added. So I'm going to drag it up to, come on. I don't lose it. Is that a right click when you drag like that or a left click? It's a left click. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to drag it. Pick it up and drag it. Come on, drag. <laughs> what yeah. a drag. Yeah, I know. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> ah, yeah, it, it doesn't want to drag. Come on. <laughs> it's trying to move. Um, All right, what are you waiting on? Yeah, I, haven't, I still haven't figured out that left click, right click stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just going to drag it. And I have a, I'm going to find where you want to put it and you'll find Wines page. Um, so we're going to come up here, keep moving it. And like I said, I know there's an easy way. I just got to find, I just got to play around with that where it says move to. I know there's a way you can get there. So I'm just going to drag it up here to my Fine Wines page. Come on. Keep moving. Sheila, while you're doing that, in the beginning of your lesson today, another um, person asked the question about response magic. Is that where you go to look at um, how your ads are performing? No, response magic is a lead generator that should be on your page, but it is yeah, also a yeah, it's also a um, a magnet that you can use for advertising. 
Um, I have a Response Magic page that I send to my students for them to sign up with so that I have access to their email and I can um, send them information through their email. Um, I have one that I put in um, advertising that people can sign up if they're interested in um, learning about wine or learning about Valentis and it has a email list specifically just for that so that when I go in and look at my response magic I can see you know that they're there all right I'm gonna drop this and pick it back up so where do you go to look at your um, um, responses to your ads you don't um, only the ad sites that you put them in they okay. do have yeah they have some of them do like I said Ablewise they send you an update every week um, for the ads that you have out there and it's called what Ablewise? Ablewise yep it's a free ad you get 10 free ads a week um, or a month and then you can go in and change them out um, as you as you wish um, depending on how they're performing um, and then you have you can actually pay for ads um, it's like what is it? Thirty dollars for fifty for a year, and fifty dollars for two hundred for a year. Um, ads that you can do. Um, and and is that A B L E? A B L E W I S E. Able Wise. All right. So I think I'm here. All right. Is it dot com? Uh huh. All right. So here is my Canada page, and as you can see, it dropped under Germany. I don't want it to drop under Germany. I want it to drop with Germany. So I'm going to see if I can get it to center. Oh, I see. Yeah. I don't want it to be its own heading, although that might be a good one to have its own heading since it is Canada. But since I don't have one for the other countries, I'm going to just move it. Come on. <laughs> Constance, my computer has been talking to your computer. <laughs> <laughs> but mine's all cleaned up. I remember yeah. I took it. It gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. we had a discussion with Apple about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we're going to move this. It's supposed to line up. It's going to line up wherever that box shows. And I don't want that box there. Do you have to go to the, to the, you know, the, okay, where it says the title, the actual original title and drop it there and then it will go into the category. Uh, it, it should drop right here. It's just, okay. It's, okay. it's my, it's my satellite link. It's not, right. it's just slow. That's what I have to do. I have there to go to the title. And, oh, okay. Right, so so now I have it in line. And so whenever they click on find wines, they're going to see this drop down. Now here's the important part that a lot of people forget to do. Uh -oh. Since I'm at the top, I'm going to go ahead and scroll up to the top mm -hmm. and I'm going to hit save menu. Yeah, I remember. Yep. Save menu. And as you can see, it's spinning counterclockwise. Once it starts spinning clockwise, you'll get a message that says your menu has been updated. Do not click out of it until you get that message. Cause that means your system is still updating. It's still saving. Um, so, so now it says my menu has been updated. Now I can leave this page. Okay. Where, so where do you see that? See right here where it says menu has been updated. Okay. You do not leave your page until you see that. If you leave okay. your page before that pops up, it will wipe it and revert back to the original before you even moved anything. And you have to start all over on resetting your menu structure. So then if I come back here and visit my site, and then I go to my... Um, Fine Wines or my wine page. So I go to my cooking food and wine. And click my drop down. And I go to my fine wines delivered. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's automatically picking stuff for me. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> oh, I hate storms. <laughs> yeah, it makes a big difference. So, all right, let's try this again. Cooking food and wine. And it still isn't where I want it to be. 
right here. I thought she was just tempting me with the chocolate page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come visit my page and get some chocolate. I have four different chocolate companies. It's amazing. I got a, email, a couple of emails the other day from companies, and I'm like, I don't remember applying for you. But I'll use them. I go in and accept them because you just never know. You never turn down anybody that wants you to advertise for them because you don't want to be blacklisted because you turn down advertisers. That don't mean you can't. Just don't make it a habit. Cause they when do, how do you, how do you um, reach out to sellers? You should be um, the ones that you have um, access to. Uh, Swanee, come on. It's there. This is really upsetting me right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you want to do, um, sign up on your triple R training. You have access to um, cj.com, which has tons and tons and tons of advertisers in there. Um, okay. Okay. And then, and then if you don't have, um, I actually created a spreadsheet that has all the uh, people on there or all the advertisers on there that you should get immediate approval for. That does not mean you don't try to get the other advertisers as well. That's there. Um, so there's the page that I did. And hopefully it clicked it and we'll be able to see what it looks like. If not, that's fine. We know what note it is there. Um, but then what I want to do, you know, cause then it's there, it's out there for people to see, but I'll, I'll probably go back and put it back into um, draft mode so that I can work on it again. You can always have multiple pages of the same ad. That's fine. Um, you want that cause then you can re, uh, reach different audiences with different titles. So um, as far as marketing, here's all my marketing sites. And, you know, these are just different sites, you know, like I have Diamond CBD affiliates. Um, you got, I got my uh, direct sellers, Excel Trips, Smart Ad is an, another affiliate program that we can have that you, um, that I found um, that has access to other different offers that we don't have. Um, we have, uh, you got your Sephora, um, you got your RoboForm. These are all in your pages. Um, you have your ClickBank. Um, you have Ad Combo, which is another marketing house like CJ. You have G4 Offers, which is another marketing site like CJ. Um, so, they, so they're on their websites, or when you click on them, there's an area that will um, that will you'll go to to um, ask yeah. to be. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, okay. Let's look at which one was I on the other day. Um, and all of these are um, in with our um, are in compliance. These are new, these are new ones. Um, these are ones that I found. Um, they're out there. Like this is CJ. This is one you have access to. I don't have um, any idea what that was. So, <laughs> so my website got approval for submission from somewhere. Um, okay. So this is CJ. And when you log in and you should have access to CJ. If you don't get with the instructor, because there are some questions that you need to fill out um, to get approval to get on CJ. Um, if you don't have it filled out right, they will deny you and you have to go back in and redo it again. Um, but once you get in, they have access, you have access to get approval for all these other companies that are in here. And there are a ton of them. There's like, I think 1500 companies in here that you have. Access to. Um, and each company usually has two or three pages of ads of all the products that they have. Um, once oh. you get access to them. So do you earn revenue on that, or is that just something that's going to draw people to your blog? This is where you earn revenue. Okay. So, yeah, so this, these are companies that you add for that you're writing pages for, or that once you write pages for, you put their, their links into your pages. Gotcha. Um, so like with this one, um, right now I have roughly, I don't know, 800 some odd pages. I did. I might be down to 700 because I got rid of a few that I wasn't using. Um, So let's see if we can get this to come up. And it, this just shows all the, like this one, it says my advertisers only. So this is only going to pull up the advertisers that I've been approved for. But I'll have to search and be, okay, do I have this? Do I have that? This shows me all of my advertisers um, <clears throat> that I've been approved for that I can use. Um, which is great. So whenever you go to CJ and you pull up your dashboard, you want to go to your links and go to search and pull up just the advertisers you've been approved for. If you want to see a message that says you put your profile, then that means you missed something. You missed one of the questions or you didn't advertise or you didn't fill out the profile. So go ahead. It will not apply for um, affiliates until you get that completed. Okay. So these are all of the, you know, I have 792 pages. Um, and that tells me right here, I have 39,576 different offers I can choose from. 
um, to market in my website. So when I say I will never run out of things to market, I will never run out of things to market. Um, just from this one website. Then you also have your brunette, you have your CJ, you have your ClickBank. And then you can also go out there and search for different companies that have affiliates. You have Amazon that's out there. You have um, even Ablewise is an affiliate. They have an affiliate site that you can market with. You have your Sephora, you have your direct sellers, you have your Valentis. Um, those are our two um, anchor yeah. offers. Then you have your mm -hmm. RoboForm, your Bitcoin. Those are other offers that you have out there. Um, so, <coughs> so when you come here to your CJ, um, these tell you your pricing. So this one says your average price is going to be $3.22 per click. Um, some of these will tell you like with the florist you usually average of sell of, of $31 this two dollars three dollars and 22 cent is what you get paid if somebody clicks on this ad that's on your site oh, so it's okay. like a click fee so if they come here and click that ad then you get three dollars and 22 cent if they come in and click and purchase then you get a commission off their actual purchase um, some of these will explain, you know, that you have a, um, some of them, they just don't have enough information to put the ad rate, but they, if you go and look at the information, it usually tells you what your commission rate is. Whenever you sign up with them and get approval, they will send you an email that tells you what your commission rate is. Um, so you have all, all kind of things, and this will tell you, this is where you could use your snippet editor, which will be great. So let's use that. I'm going to come here and say, hey, I want to use that in my ad. I will click get this snippet editor. Let's see. It's telling me I didn't save that one, which is fine. I already had it. So we're going to get this snippet editor. I'm going to come here to new. And I want to make sure I'm in my rectangle mode. Yes. And I just want to snip. And you want to make sure you start outside where you actually want. Oh, come on. No. No, I don't want to save it. All right. My tablet got in the way. So I'm going to come here to new. And I don't want any of this information in here. I just want this ad right here. Start with CB Weight Gainer, as seen on TV. Come on down. CB1 Weight Gainer is for you. Perfect. So there's my ad. File, save as. And I'm just going to save this in my folder. I haven't created a folder for. Mm -hmm. Let's see. No, I don't want to see how it pulls up PC pictures. I don't want to put it in my PC pictures. I want to put it in my blogging pictures. So I'm going to change my folder. And I want to do advertising pictures. I'm going to put it in my advertising pictures. And I'm going to name it CB1 Weight Gainer. And then hit save. So now that picture is saved, I can use it as a later date. Um, and that's another way you can use your snippet tool is actually pull up these affiliates. The other thing about C, um, CJ, some people have trouble with, um, with the actual, uh, you know, finding keywords. So if you come here and you click on your get code right here, this actually gets your code and your information for your website to use. You can come here to more information. And some of them, like this one, it tells you what keywords that is approved for this website or for this wow. particular company. So it, can, it tells you, hey, these are keywords you can use that they give you permission to use. Some of them will tell you, hey, you can't use this, you can't use my name, blah, 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 blah. The good thing about CJ is that some of them, not all of them, um, will give you keywords that you can use in your website um, or in your ad for them. And then you have your advertiser. You can click on that. Um, and it will give you some information on the advertising. It tells you what categories you can promote, promote this in, nutritional supplements. So it gives you some information. It tells you um, the serviceable areas. As you can see, here's some of the areas that uh -huh. have bought it, but the majority of it is in the United States. <clears throat> but it does uh -huh. say you can market it in Canada. It gives you a brief description of what the company does. So, you know, if you, um, it says we also ship to Canada, Puerto Rico, Guam, U.S. Virgin Islands. So there's some places it tells you off the bat where you can market to. So use what you have there to help draw traffic to your pages. Um, so not all of them have it, but the ones that do utilize it. So whenever you go to, you click, you know, same thing with here, Ink Farm. Um, same thing. Let's see if I want to, you know, what kind of information can I get from here? I go to my more information. Um, it doesn't have like this one, only one keyword, ink tone, ink printer toner savings. Um, so 
you know, it only has one that it approves of. That doesn't mean you can't pick your own, um, use the program Paul uses, but this is the one that it says that it will approve for you to use. Same thing with your advertising. Go here for your advertising um, and see what the company offers, where it can um, be advertised. See where it says peripherals. That means, you know, business products, business models, supplies, you know, office supplies is where you can use that. This one only advertises in the United States. Um, so I would that that would be your primary target was the United States. It doesn't say that it markets anywhere else, although it does have it. It tells you what your commission is, is your 30% commission. Um, so you have tons of information just from your CJ affiliate accounts. So utilize everything that you can. Uh, but then, like I said, you know, I don't ever write on a pay on a particular ad. Um, I always write what I know about and then, you know, come back later and, um, you know, put my affiliates with it. Now, um, Constance was talk asking about, um, let's see, where did I put that one? Mm -hmm. When you, um, oh, I'm sorry. When you apply to uh, Google AdSense, how long does it usually take to find, to get approved? It depends on your site. Um, I got approval for Google AdSense the first month I was in, um, which is not normal, I was told, but um, I was determined, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Uh, but um, usually once you apply for Google AdSense, um, some of them you will get an immediate response. Um, once you click that ad, uh, because once, once you apply for it, they will tell you to go back into Google and get your widget to go in so that they can crawl your website. Once they crawl your website, if they find immediate duplication or what we call scraping, where you've just totally copied and pasted from one site to another or one page to another exactly, they will immediately deny you, you know, if they find too much within the first, you know, few pages. Um, however, if they have to crawl through it a little bit more extensively, um, it could take up to two weeks for you to get an approval. Um, and once you get approved, and they will send you an email that says you didn't get approved, um, and they'll tell you why. Um, if you get approved, then that link that you put in there, they will go ahead and reassign that link, and they will start. You will start seeing um, marketing on your website, um, or you will start seeing ads on your website. Um, which is what you want to see. For some reason, mine aren't showing, so I need to go in there and see if I need to update something on there. It could just be because of the... the Can you back up, Sheila? You yeah. said, I'm sorry, if you're approved, that you will see ads on your website. Yeah. Google, so, yeah, you know how you have those pop-up ads that show up every once in a while when you go see something and there's a pop-up ad, like this one right here is a pop-up, this ad click media. Mm -hmm. right okay. That's one. Um, yeah. so if you That's click on that, you know, mine usually shows up at the top. Sometimes they show up in the middle. Um, and if anybody clicks that just to get it off my site, I get a click rate. If they actually click on it and buy it, then it's just like any other program. I get a commission off of it. Um, so it just depends on how, you know, you have your ad set up. But once you get approval, those ads will usually start showing up within, you know, 24 hours of you getting approved to, to so run your Google ads. Those ads on the right there. <clears throat> they put them on, not you. No, I put most of these on. Some of them are my Google ads. Oh, so but, you, but you're not supposed to click on your Google ads. They will ban you for that. They will take it away from you. Because oh, you get paid for clicking them. So you don't want to wow. go and click your own ads and then make money off yourself. That's not fair. So, okay. so they, they will, and they can track if you've clicked your own ads. So, so you that, have to have a list of which are your ads and which are their ads for no, each page? No, it actually says, it will say Google on the top of it. You'll know that it's a Google ad. Yeah, you'll, and you'll so know. It, so once you're approved, they email you and then they give you something to switch out the widget so that it's... Um, it, no, it's the, the widget that they give you, like, um, here, I'll show you my widgets. Because I, I applied about a week and a half ago. Did they give you, so did you go back in and pull your, your, your link, your widget? Uh, yeah, I, I, set up, I set it up, and they sent me an email that um, they're reviewing it. Yep, so once, you, once they review it, then that's fine. You let them review it. Um, if it gets denied, they will come in and tell you. Um, so here's my... But they'll tell you either way. No, they won't tell you if it's denied. 
I mean, they'll only tell you if it's denied. If it's running, then they will send you a script like this. This is my Google script. And it's in my text and in my visual. And so it'll look like this when I go in there. And then I just, you know, hit my saved and done. And so when anybody looks at my website, they'll see. So if you go and pull up 5e95.com, you'll start seeing um, those. And it mine's usually at the top. And it'll say um, in the corner, sponsored by uh, Google Ads. Um, so they, they don't tell you if you've been denied. They just yeah. tell you if you're approved. No, they tell you if, if you've been denied. They won't tell you if you've been approved. Because I've gone in in the past few days and Google searched some things and my web, my uh, website comes up. Yeah, when you go, okay, let's see. The, have you gone in and checked to see if you have a different link in your Google? So when you go to your Google um, AdSense page, I haven't. Because I have mine set on auto ad, so that means whatever the person that's searching my web system has been searching on their system, that's the ads Google runs. And so you set that up where they do? They do. They're supposed to be fixing that, that ad text file. That's why my ads aren't showing up. Okay. So, but when you come here, you want to make sure that and that's something that tech has to fix. They keep saying, sending me that. But when you come to your home, you're going to go and pick, um, pull your site up. And it should have your widgets in there. And you're going to pull your widget and make sure that it's the same thing. So I got to go in and find out why this is going on. So, so they, don't, they don't tell you, um, I still don't get that. They, they, they tell you either way? They only tell you if you were denied. Okay. If you were approved, your ads will start showing up within 24 hours. Okay. So, yeah. So what you need to do is find out um, if you haven't heard anything, you can always go in and, and, you know, chat with them and say, you know, can you give me an update on it? Um, but usually if they, you know, send, respond to the email that you sent them, they will, you know, see what's going on. But for the most part, you know, if, because uh, there's a bunch of us that's got this text file message right here for our ads, and we don't know what's going on with it. Um, there's Roy's supposed to be looking into it to see what's going on with Google. Um, but uh, that's the only thing, is they tell you if you've been denied, if you've been approved, um, then your information will start showing up. Your ads will start showing up. So there's nothing that gets changed with the widget. What I put in there to apply is what it stays at. Yep, yep, yep. That and, widget and is... is that is that googleadsense.com is where you go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if they've sent you an email, then I would just reply to that email unless it says that it's, um, or read the email, it should give you the information on where to reply or comment back on and see what's, okay. what's going on. And then that way they can, you know, figure out what's going on with, with uh, that. Because usually, like I said, it usually takes, you know, uh, it can take up to two, three weeks before you find out, especially if they say they're looking through it. They will look through every page. Okay. So that means, you know, I usually take that as a good thing because um, most people, when they get denied, they get denied within the first 24 hours. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> so people can still go to your website and make purchases, even oh, though yeah, you're that has nothing to do with your website. The Google AdSense is just another ad that runs through your site that you get paid on. It's basically free money. Oh, okay. Yeah, it has nothing to do with you being able to go in and work in your, your system. It's better for you to continue to work in it and add oh, yeah. it because they see that you're, you are an active website. You don't want to go yeah. and do Google and say, okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm not going to do anything. They want to make sure that you're an active website. So you want to continue to market your site. You want to continue to advertise it and continue to write pages. I learned so much today. I can't thank you enough. <laughs> oh, no problem. That's what we're that here for. Fabulous. That's what we're here for. So we're going to go into our response magic now. And as I said before, you have two logins for your response magic. You have your response magic affiliate site where you get your affiliate links, which is called Platinum Synergy, which is also your response magic. And then you have your response magic email marketing, which is where you set up your personal response magic pages. Okay. 
So I'm going to log in. And um, for those of you, we're going to explain what these three little buttons are. They're very useful. Um, this is where you can create an email list. So when you do your opt-in forms, it'll ask you, you know, to create an email list. Do you want to use an existing email list or use one that you are creating? If you create an email list, you want to give it a title and add your list. After you add your list, there's some things you have to do to it. Um, you want to make sure that you respond back to the email that they send you so that you can activate that list. If you do not activate that list and you put your information there, they will not go, it won't go to where you want it to go. So follow the instructions. I already have 12 different lists, so I don't need to add another one. Um, so you want to make sure that you name your list. And once you get your list named, um, like mine, we can go to my PBS students. I already have one there. Um, then you can see what your list looks like. Um, and they automatically send people to send emails to them? What, no, you create the email. So we're going to go okay. through that. Um, then you have your SMS list for those that pay for e Response Magic. There is, uh, if you pay for Response Magic, you can create an SMS list, which means text messaging. Um, so I do, it's like $9 and something a month um, to do SMS marketing with them. Um, then you have your opt in form, which everybody should have created one and put on their website. And if you're not sure what that is, mm -hmm. let's go visit site. And you can see my opt-in form. And like I said, I have two different ones. I have one on my homepage. And it's basically, um, I think it's my Valentis page, my Valentis site. And then I have one on my consecutive pages. I don't want my dashboard. Please cooperate. There we go. My doggy must be sleepy. He just came in here and got under my feet. <laughs> what kind of dog is it uh it's an american bulldog oh yeah he looks like Petey off the little rascals <laughs> so um so here's mine um this is on my home page it's um i say get the skinny on weight loss coffee and then i got me a little meme in there that i put in and then i have the link for them to go do my tour um, so there's so many different things that you can play with it once you get it put in your system. And then if you go to any of the other pages on my site, I have a different one for the right-hand side, which is the consecutive pages in my website. <clears throat> and that one's for my wine. And you can, <clears throat> you can do the same one on, on your whole site if you want to. Or you can do like me, and I, I switch them out about every few months, depending on what I want to market. Um, I forgot how you said you switch them. Just I just go in and remove that widget and put the new widget in. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll show you. Um, when you create, yeah, when you create your form, right here where it says existing list, most if you have not created an email list and got it up and running, you just want to select it from the list that's there, okay. and usually it says. Um, what does it say? I got so many. You see, I got so many lists. Um, I don't even think mine's there anymore. But I think if you haven't created one, it says um, a website or website list or something like that. Um, so I want to use the one from my Valentis. We'll just say Valentis. I'm going to put it in my Valentis leads. Um, your call to action is going to be your headline. And you'll be able to see your form as you create it. So my call to action will be, um, what do I want to say? Remember you said you had some already done that you just already have done. You don't have yep. to keep. Yeah, I'll show you, but I'm going to make a new one. Everybody, look at that little choose there. Don't forget yeah. to choose. <laughs> you can change the color. Once yeah. you get your color, this block tells you what color your palette is. And then you hit choose. If you don't hit choose, it won't save it. So you hit choose, and I'll automatically it saves it. My call to action is, I don't want to say stay informed. Okay. 
Okay, that one you cannot change color, which I hate because it kind of takes away from the aesthetics of your magnet, but all right. And then the questions, you wanna make sure that you check these in red. And the reason I say that is because then that lets them know, the computer system know and your form know that, hey, they have to fill this out before they can leave. They cannot just say, I want access to it. Then you have the option to add to this list. <clears throat> I don't want to get too involved in it. So, you know, some people say, hey, I want your phone number. I want your address, blah, blah, blah. I just want their state so that I know where they're located. And I'm going to fill that out because once I get their email and I start dripping on them, I will ask them, hey, when can we, especially if they ask me, hey, what's this about? Then I have a message that I send them. That's great. When can we get together? I need your phone number. Can I please have a contact information so that I can give you a call? Um, I don't ask it for them from them here because people kind of get leery when you start getting too involved in the questions you want to ask. Um, and then right here, you can do the same thing. Your submit, you choose. Um, and so I'm going to go back and see what I said. New business venture here. So here I want to say start today. And then change the color. I want to stay within the same color palette. It's still there. All right, then your questions. These are the important stuff too. Um, do you want them to use their Facebook page? No, because Facebook page only allows you to get their email, not their font name. So you do not want them to use Facebook as a, as a landing page. You want your Facebook page. Okay, here's your other information. This statement is important because once they fill this out, this is telling them, hey, you're giving this person, make sure your name spelled correctly, you can put your business name in there. I say use your name because that's what your business is surrounded with. You're giving this person permission to send you emails. So that means in order for them to, I can send them emails. If they don't want to send any, want to receive any more, they have to physically opt out of it. They have to say, hey, I don't want any more emails sent to me. Then I will get a message stating that and they'll be removed off my list. But until then, this tells me, gives me permission to send them emails at my discretion. So that's why it's important to make sure this information is correct. Um, do you want to send notification? You want to get notifications when somebody fills this out? Yes, you do. Do you want them to stay on this landing page? No, you don't, because all it says is thank you for filling out your response magic form. And that's it. It stays on response magic. You want to give them a website page to go to. And I just use my standard page. If you don't know where you want to send them, send them to your home page. Go back up there. All right, my number lock's not on. I was wondering why it kept jumping. Okay, so I want them to go once they finish filling out the survey. I want them to go to my landing page. Do I want to leave this message powered by? Yes, leave that on there. That's just letting them know who it came from. Um, and then double check everything. Because once you submit, you can't go back and change it. You have to create a whole new form. So always go back, double check, make sure everything's exactly the way you want it. Colors done. Okay, make sure your spelling is right. And then you click submit. Okay, and then this is the site that you, you're going to copy, the one in the gray area. That's going to be your link, your widget that you're going to put in your code. And you, when you go to your widgets on your website, you're always going to select a, ta a text tab down at the bottom. And it will ask you, do you want to put it on the right or the left? You want to put one on each side. Once you click on it, it will open up just like it did here. It'll open up and you always want to make sure you put it on the text side. We have a lot of people that put it on the visual. You want to put it on the text because that's where your HTML codes go. And as you can see, it puts your widget. It puts it exactly there. Once you get finished, you're going to hit saved and then you're going to hit done. And then that will appear on your site. I have some people that say, oh, I've lost my widget. I don't know where it's at. The good thing about this is you have your review here. You have this right here where it says customer magnets. This keeps track of all the magnets you've ever created. So here's the one I just created. If for whatever reason you lose it um, or you, you just don't want it anymore, you can say, oh, I don't like that anymore. I'm going to get rid of it. You can delete it. 
Um, but if you want to go back and see what they look like, you know, you can just click on get code and there's all your stuff right there. Um, you got your, your squeeze links and then you have your widget link. Your squeeze links are what you advertise. These are the links that you put in just like you do any other affiliate link um, that you can put in your website, you can put in your advertising campaigns, you can put in your Facebook page. Um, if you want to see what they look like, like with some of mine, I've actually got um, videos in there um, that, I can, that I can use. Let's see, is this one the one that has the video in it? So I can come here and if I want to click on this, this will show me what my ad, what it looks like when somebody clicks on it. So this one has a video. So it says two cups a day. The skinny on weight loss two cups a day. It has a Valentis um, YouTube that they can watch. Wow. Once they finish watching it, playback. Okay, my internet's dying. Wonderful. <laughs> um, so I'll have to go back and check and make sure once I get my system up and running to make sure that that video is still there. Um, and it could be that the link has broken down because it's so old, which is fine. I can always go back in and replace it. And But then once they feel, see that video, they can fill this out and click learn more. When they click on learn more, see, see, this is why I say you have to click on those red dots. You have to fill out all that information before they can learn more. So that's the importance of clicking on those red dots. Um, so then once they go to learn more, it takes them to my Valentis page that I want them to read about how to lose weight and how to get signed up with Valentis. So these are the, um, the squeeze links are the ones that you advertise. And like I said, I have several set up. I go to my customer magnet, same thing with my direct sellers. I have um, the same thing set up with them. I have, um, when I go there, I get my customer magnets. And I can pull up my direct sellers link right here. I probably need to do some more for my wine, especially now that Canada is open. And that's how you switch them. It's officially open now. So yeah, when I want to switch them, um, I just choose which one I want to switch it with. I look at it and see if that's the one I want it to be in. And then I'll just go into my website, switch out the widget and put the new one in, the, another one that I created. This one, I actually told them they could connect with Facebook if they wanted to, because I am on Facebook. So this is the one that I registered with on Facebook. If this video doesn't play, then I know it's my website. If, the, if it plays, then I know it's that, that one is gone on Valentis. So this one's actually playing. So that means that Valentis link is bad. So here they can actually watch, it's a four minute video. They can watch the direct sellers video. They can come in here and hit join today. And this takes them to my direct sellers link. Um, and they can join up for direct sellers. So it, there's several different ways you can do the squeeze link. Now, when you put this link in your website, the video does not show. It is not um, compatible with our website um, coding. But it does show if you link it, you know, anywhere else outside of your website. So that's the only difference between your squeeze links. So... Um, that's how your response magic works. Um, it's really great. You know, you can create emails. Um, I really don't worry about this. You can go in and actually create an email and you just go in here and, you know, it, there's a video. So watch this video training because it tells you exactly how to go in and create your, your emails that you can send. Um, you can put it in saved emails or put it in a category. You can do your subject line and it tells you, you know, how to, create an email. Now with me, I can go in here and I want to send an email. So let me go back up here and I already have mine saved. So I can go in here and come on. This is probably going to tell me to get out of this one. So I'm going to close this. Yes. I don't want to save it. Okay. So once that's done, so I'm going to go here and I want to do an email broadcast. And it's asking me who do I want it to go to. So I'm going to choose everybody that I have access to that people have signed up with on my leads. I'm not going to go in and check and see if there's people in there. And the date is going to be today's the 13th. The 16th is Tuesday, correct? So we yes. want to go to the 16th. Tells me it's Tuesday at 1 a.m. I don't want it to go out that early, but I do want it to go out at least by 8. I want to use an existing email. I wanted to send all the contacts I have available. 
I'm going to send it to an HTML format. And then what do I want to send them? I want to send them my Tuesday training call. And I'm going to hit proceed. And my spam score is 3.5, which is good. That means it's going to go. It's in the yellow, so that means it's pretty much safe, you know, so that it's not going to end up in junk mail. But the good thing about this is that most of these people have already said that I can send them stuff. So I've already got my new update in there. I got my information where they can go and log in. It's got their name, and then I'm going to hit send email. And it's telling me that it's scheduled to go to 31 people. All right, so now on July the 16th at 8 a.m., this message will be automatically sent to those people that have approved me to send them their information, um, this information. So that's how you can use your response magic for those of you that are students or those of you that have created a customer base to get people into your PBS system. Um, same thing with those that are doing the V marketing leads. Um, those that have information, depending on how big your space is, you can go in and add them to your, your list and send automatic updates to them. Um, so there's several different ways you can use your V marketing. I mean, your uh, response magic. Yes, all your categories have to be modified as a page, just like anything else, Miss Cindy, Cynthia. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, everything in your website has to be modified, including your category pages. Um, even though they are ads, you still want it to be put into your words. Um, everything, especially if you want to get approval for Google, Google AdSense. You want to make sure that those are in there. And then you just log out. So that's how you can use Response Magic. Anytime you go to create anything in Response Magic, it has a video with it. So look at the very top of the creation page and watch that video. It tells you exactly how you can create that page and what you need to do to fix it. So I think that covers everything. Is there anything else we need to go over? I just wanted to get your... Um uh, how to get to your YouTube and get this training. Okay. All right. Hold on just a minute. I'll get that for you. And I post all of our um, Saturday trainings is on my YouTube. You'll see some other stuff on there because I use it for just about everything. I've been thinking about maybe just getting one for, for training stuff, but it's like, no, that's too much work. <laughs> so I'm going to post this in the chat so you can see it. And now where would that go to so we have it? This will be in the chat, right? So if you look at the bottom of your Zoom channel mm -hmm. and pull up the chat, you can copy it from there. Oh, okay, good. Mm -hmm. Or you can go on the more and say and press on more and you can save the chat. Yep. So you can save your chat too and come back and look at it later. <clears throat> um so where do, you, where do you come back to? I mean, where's it saving it to? Wherever you have it saved, do you have to probably specify where you want to save it or it defaults to wherever your default save screen is? Okay. Usually it's on your computer or on your um, desktop. Okay. It's Better if you specify it because when it defaults, you never find it back. <laughs> yeah, if it defaults, if you don't know where your default is. But usually if you click save as, then you can specify a folder you want it to go to. All right. All right. Is there anything, anything, anybody wants me to cover? Oh, this is kind of early really for us. appreciate everything. That was a great training session. <laughs> Thanks. I think I'm I mean, beginning we're, to feel normal. We're, we're oh, finishing early, best. guys. What's the deal? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Sheila. It's starting to make more sense. <laughs> Sheila, this is one of your best. If there's anything you want to go over, um, I'm here to help. So, you know, we got a few more minutes. Um, Sheila, it's Estelle. <laughs> I just made it back on. Hi, how are you? I'm uh, good. Uh, just finished up with the, oh my God, that that just got done now. Can you believe it? Yeah, it was Rory. <laughs> it, well, actually, it's mostly Paul. Oh, okay. Rory's sick. Rory had like a horse thrown, and so Paul did most of it. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. perfect. Um, I, I, this is something you've gone over before and every time you do, I say, I'm going to do it right then and there. And then I don't. And then when I want to do it, I forget. <laughs> so <laughs> if you could go over, um, uh, how to do a business account on Facebook again. Yep. What, okay. Thank you. Yep. And it's real simple. 
um, you don't have to per se do a business account so much as do a business page. If you already That's have, what I mean. yes. yep, do a, if you have a personal Facebook page, then you're just going to log into your Facebook. Okay. Okay. And once you get there, you want to make sure that you're logged into your feed count, your feed profile, not your business. I mean, your personal, you want to make sure you're on your main profile page. And can you show how you mm -hmm. figure that out? Thank yeah. You. So you're going to be on your home page. So depending on how many pages you've created, you will have them all up here. So you want to make sure that you go to your home page. Okay. Alrighty. Mm -hmm. Cause that's where all of your information is going to be as far as how many groups you have access to, um, what, uh, uh, people that you have access to, your feeds, your games, everything's going to be there on your home. So, as soon as it decides it's, oh, and I'm using a satellite link because we're having a bad storm here, but I'm wondering if I should have just stayed <laughs> on my regular internet because um, it's been really slow. All right, let's try it again. Your internet reminds me of two things. <laughs> One is snail mail, and the other is living out in East Texas near Palestine. <laughs> I'm sorry. It'll be better. Are you no? Um, I think we're good right now. Okay. I'm, I'm just working my face. I'll take his place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Bruce is catching on really quick. Oh, good. So what you want to do is right explore. You see where it says pages? Mm -hmm. You just want to click on that. And it will give you the option to create. You see up here where it says create. Okay. And um, you can just hit create and then name it. And once you name it, it will sign it its own URL that you can promote. Okay. Because that's what I do is whenever I'm telling people to connect with me on Facebook, I don't give them my personal Facebook page. I give my business page right here. So it will give you a link with the new business page? Yeah. As okay. soon as you create up here at the top, it will be your oh. yeah. So that's you create and base. Um, so you can see right here, I have a page. And then I have my business page. So if I click on this. That's business page. Yeah. So if I click on this, then you will see that link that changes. If the internet ties to work with me. Do you want to say you should charge for the personal page? No, as long as you go through it this way. Now, if you okay. have a business account with Facebook, yes, they do charge that. Okay. But if you have a personal page, you just go up and create a new page and leave it as a page. Okay. So here's me on my um, business page and its own link. So the end product one is the end of the link. I don't need to put all the rest of this because I don't want them to come to my bookmarks and all that stuff. So whenever you go to um, create your page, you can do a your own, create a whole new back. You can do a whole profile picture. Um, it doesn't ask you your profile information because it's a completely different page. Um, you see, it's got my own different um, at page, at name. So, you know, you can see this. Um, you can have people from your social media pages. Um, and you can have people from your social media pages. You can have these things in it. Um, or these pieces. It's not totally advertising because they're not like that. Um, even though you know it's a business page, um, you just want to make sure that it's fun and entertaining. And it does have a little bit about yourself there. Um, that's good. So you can put uh, a blog or two on there too. Yes, you treat this just like any other Facebook page, but you will not get banned for marketing. It's not like your normal Facebook page because I am using it for business. Hey, I barely know how to spell Facebook. I'm not like that. And again, this is where you can use Canva to go in. And Paul did one, the, uh, I think it was on Thursday night. It might have been one day last week, uh, where you can go on Canva and create a Facebook profile picture. You can create you know, just about anything on Canva. Uh, they're talking about it on DCA. You know, make sure that you have a great picture. Um, you don't want to stretch it out. If you go to Canva and use it, then you can actually um, create a profile. That would be, um, no, um, so there's just so much you can do. Canva is a program. Um, so it's one way, you know, you can use that, um, use that tool to, to go in and create all kinds of different things you want. Okay. Can, can you create fake dollar bills too? Uh, yeah, you can create anything. Now, whether you can use it's the option. <laughs> <laughs> Who could test it out for us? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking I mean, for any way to make money. <laughs> no kidding. I agree. But, yeah. And the other thing, you know, um, is what you want to do. And, and, and like Paul was talking today, you know, we had some people asking questions on the, the webinar this morning was um, about, you know, how you get traffic to your system, how you get indexed. Um, if you create a page, and I was talking to Miss uh, Constance this week about this, when you create a page, 
if you enjoy that page and you, you know it's a really good page and you're proud of it, go ahead and publish that page. Go ahead and start advertising that page because you want people to be aware of your system. I hear people say, but my system's not ready. I don't want people to come to it. Yes, you do. Whether the first thing you should do when you get your system is go through every page and change every link. All your links should be changed first and foremost. Then you come back and start with your modifications. That way, when you finish a page, you can publish it and you can promote it and advertise it without being worried that somebody's going to click on one of Roy's links. If all of your pages are changed with your links, that is not a worry you should have. That way, when you finish a page and it's finished modifying or you've created a brand new page with the links in it, you can advertise it and your system and your site will be okay. People can still shop it. They don't care if it's the same thing that somebody else is saying. Um, all they're worried about is they came to see a page that they saw advertised and they're reading it. And then they say, okay, what else do they have here? So you want to make sure all the links are changed first so that when you do create a new page or you've modified a page that you like, you can advertise it instead of sitting on it. You want as much traffic coming to your system as fast as you can, as soon as you can, and as many times as you can. So get your system advertised so that by the time your system's complete and you're ready to uh, apply for Google AdSense, they can see that, hey, people's coming to this site. You know, it's got generating traffic. The more traffic you generate, the more potential you have for making income. Your All your sites are live on Google, but until you get traffic and start getting indexed with those keywords and the traffic coming to your system and your advertising, you're going to be on the back pages of Google. Most people don't don't search past the first five to 10 pages of Google. If they can't find what they're looking for by then, they either quit looking or they change what they're looking for. So that's why you wanna make sure that you're indexed at least on the first five pages. You can't do that unless you have traffic coming to your system and those clicks come up. That's hey Sheila, can, I'm sorry, can you put your, um, share your YouTube address again? Yes, it should still be in those chat. Yeah. I didn't see it. Yeah, it says for me, my YouTube channel. I'll copy and paste it, it back. It's from Rory, not Sheila. Yeah, it'll say from Rory because I'm on Rory's page. Yeah, it'll say from Rory, but it's actually me. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Sorry about that. Oh, no problem. Yeah, we, we use Rory's channel because he's paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> I have my own Zoom channel, but I don't have, because I never know how many people's going to show up. I only have enough for five people at a time. So, um, you know, I never know how many people's going to be on, on, the ch on my Saturday training at once. So that's why Rory has it, I think, up to 25 people that we can have at a time without it interfering with, you know, his cost or what he's, you know, mapped out. So, um, but yeah, uh, who knows? When I get big enough, I might have my own. I don't know. We'll see. I got enough now. I could probably do a couple of students at a time, but YouTube work. I mean, share screen works great. So is there anything specific anybody would like me to go over? Same channel next week. Same channel next week. Um, well, wait a minute. My husband wants me to go to his ball game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I might be using satellite at the ball field next week. So, cause we'll be in Burlington. I think it's next week. We'll be in Burlington. So we'll probably be sitting at the ball field, but yeah, same time. Same channel. Same channel. Same, same time, same channel. Yeah. This will be our regular um, channel from now on cause Roy's going to be using the other one for instructor training. So if any okay. of you guys are interested in becoming an instructor, get with your instructor so that they can verify that you have what Roy is looking for to become an instructor so that you can get invited to those instructor calls. Sheila? Yes. Could you show one more thing, and I know you've shown this before, is how to post on LinkedIn? Oh, sure. Please. Uh-huh. Let's go here. It's your anniversary, Sheila. I know he's running right asleep in the lawn in the in his recliner. <laughs> it's your anniversary, Sheila. Yeah, twenty nine years. Oh, God oh. bless you! Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. That's unheard of. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were we were dating. I think what six years before we got married. So. Ooh, wow. Yeah, we've been together a while. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I got to find where my LinkedIn is. Uh, did I move it? There it is. Okay. So we're going to log into LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is really good because they actually give you the option to write articles in there. So you can actually go in and publish an article just like you would on your website. So you could take one of your website articles and post it in there with all your links in it. Isn't that wonderful? Nice. 
Mm -hmm. I've done that a couple of times, so um, especially if it's something you really like. Um, even interest pieces, you know, because they always celebrate somebody's anniversary at work. Um, one time I posted in there, yeah, you've been with this company for 10 years. What if you were home for 10 years making the same income? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and put a link for direct sellers in there. So, you know, you could play around with it a little bit. All right. So we're going to pull that up. And... Mm -hmm. It's still thinking. Okay, so here is your LinkedIn. And you're just going to go home. And it's just like Facebook. And I'm going to pull up my ad copies because I'm going to put something in there. And which one do I want to put in? What was that new one I just did? Okay, right here. So I'm going to use this right here. It says start a post, and it says you can write it all. If you click on it, it takes you to a page this way, and you made a title, and you're all there. We're going to post. So it's going to say start post. Is that different than writing an article? Or? Yes. Article, you actually write an article. shows a blank page, just like you're creating a page in your website. This is a post just like it is on your um, Facebook page, Instagram, anything like that. Like okay. posting an ad? Mm -hmm. thing? Okay. Yep. Or po posting to Facebook. Um, so I'm going to come here, make sure that paste. And I'm gonna all come. your hashtags down there, right at the bottom. Yep, you can put your hashtags in there um, once you get finished with it. Those are yours, though. The, the no, that's the ones they've put in there. I can write oh. over them. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. And then I'm gonna copy this. Okay. And that's your new page, isn't it? Your internet website? Yep. Yep. So then oh, it's asking me, do I want to do this? So I'm going to do a picture. And it's going to ask me to select the image as soon as it pulls up. And I want to, and I'm not sure if it has restrictions on the size of your image, that might be why it wouldn't let me show my image. So we'll see in just a minute. So I'm going to go to my blank pictures or my logo pictures. And I'm going to do my hobbies. Okay, and hit next, and then I'm going to add a hashtag, hobby business, and then put another hashtag, work from home. Let's do one more hashtag. Make money with hobbies. This may be the question I asked in a class I'm taking, but if someone is searching on Google a subject that says work from home, your hashtag will pop up? It or? potentially could. Okay. So mm -hmm. I guess. My question was in the class was, how do you do all the searching? Like when they go, went viral. <laughs> how do I know? When they, when they say it went viral, that means that they had something that everybody was looking for or all their friends posted it to all their friends and all their friends posted it to all their friends. Um, usually that's what it means when it went viral is that it was something that somebody liked 
and they posted it to all their friends or shared it with all their friends and it just kept moving and you know and it got tons of hits um so Basically, that's the same thing it is what you search like if all of a sudden i'm searching something i go oh look you know there were yeah. like five thousand people or five hundred thousand people yeah. or okay yeah. thank you yeah and same thing with instagram if you go into instagram and t click on a hashtag say hashtag you know work from home then it's going to pull up everybody that's used that work from home so you can see what they've advertised um and it just goes in order on how many clicks have been it's been hit just like with uh, google it goes by the, the thing you have to realize with google is there's people that pay for their spots um so a lot of those number one spots that you see people with are from paid companies that pay google that say hey i want to be on number one all the time um the other ones are the ones that for people to you know like us that are coming in and and we actually get clicks you know if we wanted to be on that number one spot then we would have to call google and say here's my focus keyword what do i need to be number one all the time and i'm telling you it's going to be a pricey um but now you can get to the you know page one or page two just by your advertising um, and your clicks, Google will move you up. But now if they have somebody that's paid to be in a certain spot, you're not going to pa pass them. It just doesn't work. But, you know, for the most part, you can be indexed on those first five pages just by your traffic that you've get, gotten and by, in, by Google looking at you and saying, hey, she's got a lot of traffic or they've got a lot of traffic coming at her site. It's an interesting site. It's been hit quite a few times, you know, uh, the companies are there are something that people are looking for. Google will move you up also. So that's why I say advertise your site all the time. You need to be advertising. You need to be adding new stuff all the time. Um, so that's why social media is big. That's why your advertising is big. That's why LinkedIn is big. There's a lot of companies out there on LinkedIn. Um, I still have people that search me to come work for them, you know, and I haven't worked in two years. You know, so um, it, it, they're out there. So if they're searching for you, they come up and they pull my stuff. You know, it's there for them to look at. They can see my profile. My profile has my web address on there. So um, I think in the last couple of weeks, I've had so many um, internet marketers, you know, send me information. Hey, I've seen your website. You did good work. You know, what would you think about coming to work for us? And I'm like, no, nope. <laughs> sorry. Um, but it's just there. So use it however you need to but make sure again you don't want to do nothing but advertise on here um, but let's make sure that it's based on like with LinkedIn it's for businesses you know people come here they're looking for jobs or they're looking for people or they're looking for the next big thing so this is a good place to do your um, social media or your um, sociable um, marketing uh, for your sociable page, it's good to do your blogging for cash with Roy page. It's good to do your Bitcoin pages. Um, your response magic is good because that's a lead generator. Um, same thing with your coin bait, your coin um, is a coin state base. Um, you know, your Omnex, anything dealing with business stuff is this is a good place to market it. So if you got paid when all your pages in there, once they get modified, come here to LinkedIn write a very professional business blog like I just did and just, you know, put it out there. Make sure you have a good professional looking picture. That's where Canva comes in. Create your own picture. These are all pictures that I got off of, off the, um, off of Google images. And I went to Canva and just created it however I wanted it to look. You know, I, you know, organized them the way I wanted them to, to look and, you know, put a background color that drew the eye. And, you know, there's my website down there. They can come in here and look at it. Um, so, you know, it's not too flashy, but it's eye-catching. So, um, and it's there. Same thing with your other things. You want to make sure that um, you put appropriate information on the appropriate websites. Facebook, you know, it's anything. Basically, you can do Instagrams the same way. Um, and then, you know, LinkedIn is, like I said, more professional based, more business based. So that's what you want to advertise there. That's not saying that you can't advertise clothing and travel because these people travel for business. They need clothes to wear. They want to go on vacations as well. So, yes, you can still market those things there. But when you do, be in mind that these are business people. These are high profile people. So you want to make sure that your whatever pictures and however you word it goes in line with what their professions are. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. All right. So we good? Yes. Yes. Thank you. All, All right. right. Thank you, Sheila.
All right. So everybody good to go. Any more questions? Anything else you want me to go over real quick? What are you doing for your anniversary? <laughs> I was going to ask you. I was like, <laughs> none of my business. I'm going to go get my oh, toes done. <laughs> I'm going to go get my toes done. And then I'm probably, we're probably going to go out to dinner. Oh, nice. We, we were thinking about going to the beach, but with the storm going and oh. it, we just, it wasn't going to be, you know, a good vacation to go down there. And, um, then we were just like, you know, we'll just stay home because we know our grandkids are going to be calling us before the night's over, wanting us to come get them because they're with <laughs> their mom. So, but 